guys, well done. It is uh, just about five o'clock, 20 past five, on Wednesday the 5th of June. I remember all those weeks of saying, you know, what date it was as we counted down towards the exam. We got here now. So congratulations. You have paper one in the rear view mirror. I am certainly not going to do a um, post-mortem on the paper. I just don't believe in it. I think when it's over, you move, you look forward, you don't look back. You can't do anything to change um, your performance in the paper. Tomorrow is paper two. I'm going to talk about that uh, briefly um, shortly. But just to say, you know, I hope it went well for you today. I never record a video today. The only reason I'm doing it is because I've been away for the last few days in a very um, peaceful part of the world where I was not looking at anything to do with YouTube or the Leaving Cert or emails or anything like that. And I came back today. <laughs> I came back today to, I'm just going to say, abuse from people giving out because I wasn't posting videos in the last few days. I thought I had, you know, there's 114 videos up on YouTube. Um, I thought there was enough there. But I apologise if you were expecting me to do that. Um, so yeah, I hope it went well. I had a look through the paper. It's a lovely paper. You know, no no surprises. That was a... The, all three texts were, were accessible, I thought. You know, there's none of this, should I have done that, should I have done this? The questions were utterly... You know, they fit, they fit into the categories that we discussed. Each one of these second questions were opinion questions. They were... They required you to make three points, um, you know, one for every five marks available. You know, they, they were looking for you to, you know, um, present your um, point of view without necessarily referring to the passage. Although, of course, you could refer to the passage. Each text had uh, a third question that was style. I wasn't surprised at all to see that the style questions were less specific than last year. I think we said that that was possible. The one thing I thought that would happen this year and didn't happen was there was no speech on the reading comprehension, but um, there was um, um, a newspaper article which was um, in informative and also you know um, quite personal and reflective. There were anecdotes in it. There was color writing in it. There was repetition. There, it was it was it was a nice. Um, um, question. This one here it was a dialogue. I, I heard the word dialogue, and I went, oh, "You know, I, I don't like dialogues in exams. I think they're, they're a difficult task." But when I looked at the at the question, it was actually just a bit of discursive writing you were asked to do. You were just basically asked to present, um, uh, two different points of view. You know, pick a contentious issue. You know, whatever the hell, climate change, education. You know, um, whatever your chosen topic was, and then look at it from two different points of view, back and forth. I think that was very, very, very straightforward. Lovely question. Um, this was, of course, from Paul Murray's The Beast Thing, which is a brilliant novel, um, and um, a, a piece of narrative writing, and the style question, entertaining and intriguing opening to a novel. And the opening, when it said opening, it wasn't just the opening paragraph here it was the whole passage was the opening to the novel and again that should be relatively straightforward about creating suspense and intrigue and introducing characters and plot lines and you know descriptive language aesthetic language um all of that all of those those um setting description um foreshadowing there were lots and lots and lots of things to write about now and i thought it was a really lovely passage as well and i hope if you picked it um you did well again the second one do you think that people have a dismissive attitude to their home place? Or why do you think? Three reasons. I mean, you know, that's you writing about your home place. It's you letting you writing about your world, the world that you live in and the frustrations that you encounter in your life. I really thought it was very reasonable paper. Very, very nice. This question B, I loved. There's no right one to do or wrong one to do, but I loved this question B. It was exactly the type of thing, you know, that... To expect a proposal, you know, that means you have an audience, you're going to them and you're saying, look, um, there's a problem in our locality. These are the key concerns. It's run down and neglected. Here's what I think we, we should do to fix the situation. And, you know, here's how I believe we could encourage 
members of the community to become active. They're looking for you to use a bit of persuasive language there, a bit of descriptive language there, you know, rhetorical skills, you know, rhetorical questions, repetition, triads. The, the, you know, there was loads of room for creative engagement there. And of course, you have your, your audience um, who you would address throughout with your um, pronouns. So yeah, I thought it was a lovely question. Third one, very, very nice piece. You know, I thought it was a nice piece. Um, you have your second question, you know, what are your views on the way young people protest? You know, I think a lot of you would have struggled with that one. I think that was why that probably wasn't um, the most popular A, but I thought it was fine. I mean, you're talking about, you know, you could talk about, um, when, I, when I read that question, I immediately talk about, thought about Just Stop Oil um, and some of the way they protest. I thought about, you know, online petitions. It's your world. You, you talk about how you protest. Again, the third one, informative, appealing piece of travel writing. It's essentially a piece of personal writing. You know, a couple of paragraphs and all the information that she, that she provides, all the detail, all the, the anecdotes, and then a couple of paragraphs on there the aesthetic language and the reflective element in it. I thought it was, it was fine. And by the way, if I say something there and you go, oh, shit, I didn't write that. Remember, there's, here there's no right answer. It's just engaged, you know, informed response. Remember I said to you last week when I did the video last week when I on this, just keep calm. I don't know what the hell that is. Just keep calm and write with a bit of clarity. That was what you did. I know that's what you did and you were fine. The diary entry, you know, this is a series of reflective diary entries. There's that word reflective, ding, 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 ding. It's a piece of personal writing. It's a piece of personal writing. And, you know, series, what does the series suggest? Well, you know, there's 50 marks, so it probably suggests, you know, four or five diary entries. Now, could you have, you know, written two or three diary entries? Yeah, if you made the mistake of only writing one diary entry, you though it says a series, you're going to lose marks. You're going to lose some marks, but not loads. You know, not loads. But it does say a series. So, you know, there's there's going to be a little bit of a penalty there if you um, didn't write um, more than one. But it would be very, very, very minor. Very minor. What they're looking for here is creativity, engagement with these three jobs, your feelings on returning home, recalling and analysing a significant moment and event that stands out for you from your travels, and reflect on the experience of travel and how it's influenced your overall worldview. And I can see how somebody would have gone, right, I'm going to write a diary entry and deal with all three of those across the diary entry. I can see that. But I suppose the sensible thing might have been to put a different um, date on each one of those jobs. But again, like as someone with loads of experience of correcting the exam, I think that would be very low down the list of problems that people would have. So hopefully you wrote with a bit of clarity, a bit of imagination. You wrote enough and you um, addressed all three of those instructions and you'd be fine. Composing was nice, wasn't it? Two short stories, two personal essays, your relationship with the natural world. When I, when I, I smiled when I read that because if you were, if you're um, in my full-time class, we, we had a look at something very similar to that uh, not too long ago. Um, the other personal essay was Aspects of Life You Find Puzzling. I mean, just a fantastic title. Just a really lovely title. I mean, purely because whereas your relationship with the natural world is quite specific, you know, aspects you of life you find puzzling could be, you know, everything from, you know, your relationship with your parents to why we have to study poetry to, you know, the, the, how a bumblebee flies. The, 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 there was really great scope there for... for um, originality imagination and um creativity see i liked it i thought the two short story titles were lovely you know strangers on an eventful train journey the only difficult thing there was that if you had a story prepared was the kind of a train journey thing and you have to make sure that it was established the characters were, were strangers but a nice broad short story question this one um a story focusing on tensions in a family or group of friends in um, which the connection between past and present is important. Again, the wording of those questions are designed to kind of stop people rote learning and writing down essays that aren't connected. But I mean, if you're somebody who's practiced writing short stories and you've got that bit of 
you know, ability to um, um, improvise, but also that ability to, you know, um, demonstrate understanding of characterization, how to write an engaging opening, bit of dialogue. Not, 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 I thought it was a lovely paper. I thought it was a lovely paper. I really liked the um, discursive essay on privacy. It was against something that uh, was similar to a past examination question. Um, I thought the idea of like, is it possible or even desirable? I thought that was good. It kind of, cause it gave you a kind of a scaffold for uh, the type of things that you want to be writing about. Um, but you know, whether or not you, you chose to do that, I don't know. The other two options, the magazine article connections that enrich teenagers lives. That's a, an opinion piece. That's persuasive argument piece. You know, really, really, really simple. It's really almost like a personal essay as well. There, there were loads of different options you could have taken there. And as long as you put your headline in and, you know, had your, you know, reader awareness to some degree and gave your little um, feedback opportunities at the end, which I always advise you to do, as long as you were just talking about young people and were able to show the different ways in which young people connect with each other, like sport, school, social media, music, you know, there's, there's a myriad of ways. Again, you're young, I'm not. And just to talk about why those things enrich you, how they make your life better. I thought that was a, it was a nice question. So yeah, that's, um, did I get them all there? There's the speech, the speech. The accelerated pace of modern life detracts from our enjoyment of it. I t again, <laughs> again, you know, you choose for or against. You'd have to think very, very carefully. You have to define what, where our modern life is accelerated maybe think about you know contrast with the past and then you know be able to give some solid examples of why um we you know that makes it more difficult to enjoy life i don't know whether i would have agreed with or disagreed with that um um speech there was no specific audience given it didn't say whether you were competing in a competition it didn't there was none of that stuff but you would obviously have to be audience aware um yeah I, Honestly, I, I'm, as I said, I don't like um, taking papers apart the day of the exam. I don't want to look backwards. I want to look forwards. But I do hope that you've come out with that going, yeah, that was fair. No big surprises there. Everything nice and handy. You did your best. That's all you can do. Don't be stressed. And then have a look at tomorrow, two o'clock. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish this one. And then straight away, I'm going to do a very short recap on what to expect in tomorrow's paper. So hopefully, hopefully that wasn't too torturous. Um, okay, and if, if that's the last time I see you, good luck tomorrow.